Hi, this is Paul Soltz from iPhone Dev TV. All right, so I'm going to create a new application. And let me get the mouse highlighted. So we're going to create a new Xcode project. I'm going to click on that. And we're going to go iOS this time with application, single view application, hit next. Then type in a name here. We're going to call this decision making. You can call it whatever you want and go with my name and my reverse website for the company identifier along with the iPhone as our device. Then we'll hit next and I'll save it in my projects directory on my desktop and then hit create. So now we're ready to get started again. Uh, in the center here we see all the settings for the application. We're gonna skip over that and we're gonna go in and look at our interface file. So click on your main.storyboard. And then if your screen isn't snapping to the thing, hit that plus button in the top. So what I'm gonna do here is add a, a couple labels and some buttons. And then I'm going to type some stuff. So this first one's going to be, did I win? And so we're going to pretend that we're playing a game and then pressing this button is going to determine. So we're going to check the points. And our next one's going to be, is it nice out? So we're sort of thinking about weather. And the button is going to be check weather. And then our last one is going to be What's my grade? And check grade. So if you're not following along right now, pause the video, design this interface, drag everything out, and follow along once you get everything out. Right now what I'm doing is I'm aligning stuff We'll see if we have any issues when we actually run it. So we're gonna quickly hit the run button and see what happens. Okay, so we've got some buttons to press. They don't look quite like buttons, but they are buttons. It's more like a hyperlink uh, with the new iOS 7. And this is our starting point. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna change the text on the top after we press one of these buttons based on some conditions that we can set up. And so before we can get to that point, we need to open up the assistant editor to connect our code to the user interface. So I'm gonna select our view controller dot H and the things that we need to hook up are outlets to our labels. And then we need actions to our buttons so that we can do something. Just right click and drag and then let go when it says insert. I'll call this the points label. I'll do the next one and we'll call this the weather label. And I'll do it one more time and we'll call this the grade label. So I'm trying to give a name that's sort of descriptive of what it is. And I used label with a capital L to associate what kind of thing I'm working with. And this is a, a label here. So I'll use label here in my code so that I know exactly here, we'll what it call is. This the point. Next we'll hook up the buttons. Button pressed. And I'll right click on the weather. Whoops. Okay, so here's where we did something wrong. And if you're following along, you'll probably do this once or twice. What I did is I actually created an IV outlet, which is not an action. So this should say action, otherwise it's not gonna do something. And so what I need to do here is delete this line of code and then right click on check weather and make sure that nothing is linked here. And so let's try that again. And I want to choose action instead of outlet. 
And so here, actually, let's go back up to the top one because that's the one that we forgot to fix. All right, so you can see that it says outlet down here. I clicked on the wrong one. So points button pressed is an outlet. And if we run our app right now, you're going to notice that it crashes in main.m and it says signal sigaboard. So this is a situation we don't want to be in and we have to go ahead and fix that. I'm going to hide that sidebar so we have more screen space. So I'm going to right click on the checkpoints button and then I hit the X here to get rid of that. Now we can reconnect if I switch back to our .h file using the breadcrumbs along the top. I can switch back and I can add that action again. So we're going to switch outlet to action and then we're going to say points button pressed. And hit connect and then do it for the weather one. Change it to action and write weather button pressed. And then last one is the grades. Grades button pressed and connect it. And we did that one wrong, so I'm gonna fix that one again. It's easy to, to miss a step. So right click, hit the X. This is something that you're gonna do a lot because you're gonna you're gonna mix up uh, and this is a common problem that causes an instant crash which is hard to figure out if you've never done it before so if you type these all in perfectly go ahead and connect one incorrectly and delete the line of code and see what happens so this is an action grades grade button pressed and I'll hit connect Okay, and now we're good to go. So we see three actions for our points, our weather, and our grade. Now, if I switch over to our .m file, this is where we're going to do the work. So actually, I'm going to switch back to single view and then turn on this side tab and then select our viewcontroller.m. Another way to get there is to select the top and to sort of go ahead and find it from the list. And there's different folders, so you can choose different things. And we're going to be in the decision making. And you're going to look for viewcontroller.m. Okay, let's scroll down. And we don't need this error message, so I'm going to hide that bar. I'm going to focus on the code here. So I want to create a, a game related sort of statement to check if I'm winning or losing. And here we're going to start with a variable and it's going to be int points is equal to 95. And next we want to have an if statement. So if the points is greater than or equal to 100, then we know that we've won the game. Otherwise we haven't won the game and we want to know how many points away we are. So I'm going to create a statement that can sort of capture this and print out based on that information. So if the points is greater than or equal to 100, then we are going to do this. We're going to say self dot points label dot text is equal to the at symbol quotation mark. You won the game. Otherwise, we're going to do something else. So let's see uh, what will happen. I'm going to go ahead and run it. And we forgot an equal sign. That's something that you'll probably encounter. So just make sure you add it and type what you see here. And then we'll run it again. And we'll hit checkpoints. So we hit checkpoints. Points was 95. It checked it. 95 is not greater than or equal to 100. So our condition did not pass. And so it said not yet. So what we're going to do here is we're going to add a statement that can figure this out for us. So we'll delete what we had here and we're going to say NS string with a capital NSS and string with format colon at symbol percent D points remaining. 
and I'll put a explanation point just for making you feel excited about what you're about to read. All right, so that is how we're going to create a string. We're going to use a string token to match our int variable with percent %d, and then that's going to display how many points away we are. Go ahead and run it again. All right, and so now we have an issue where we don't see the whole string, and so we're going to have to go back to our interface file and fix this. The easiest way to fix this problem is to make our string bigger. So I'm just going to stretch it out for each one of them until I get to the blue highlights. And then I'm going to select each one using shift, or you can do this one at a time. Open the sidebar and center the text. So now we have longer labels. If we rerun this, we will see that it prints out the string in the center. So that's what we wanted. All right, so that's cool, um, but it doesn't really show some interaction. So what we're going to do here is we're going to switch back to the viewcontroller.m. And I'm going to do something that is good just for demo purposes right now. I wouldn't normally do this in an application unless I wanted to quickly test something. And so in this situation, I do want to quickly test something without writing a whole lot of other logic. So I'm going to say static int points is equal to 95. Now, this static keyword is a special keyword, and it's going to make it so that our, our button's going to pers our, our value is going to persist. So if I check the points multiple times, it always says 95 points, but I want to try uh, getting a little bit more interaction here. And so I'm going to say that the points is equal to points plus one. So I'm going to increment it. So we'll be able to see a winning condition. So if I stop it and run it again, I'm going to click on checkpoints. And again, and you can see how it's incrementing. And it's actually displaying the, the wrong information. So we're not actually displaying how many points are left. We're actually displaying our total points. So if we wanted that information, we'd have to say something like 100 minus points. So this will give us the points remaining and we'll stop it and start it up again. And we see five points remaining, four points remaining. And now we won the game. So that's working with an if statement. And that's how we can sort of add logic to our game or logic to our application to do different things based on what the user is doing in our application. All right, so up next is the weather button. And we're going to do something similar, except it's going to be using a bool. So we'll create a bool variable. Again, this is a, a yes or a no value. So we can say bool cloudy is equal to no. And then if cloudy, we want to do something. So self.weatherlabel.text is equal to at symbol, it's cloudy. So we're just going to state if the weather's cloudy or not. If it's not true, then we're going to say, okay, self.weatherlabel.text is equal to at symbol, quotation mark, it's sunny. All right, and if we go ahead and stop, we can run this, and we can check the weather. So it says it's sunny. And again, if I press multiple times, nothing's going to happen. So to show you what happens if this condition were to change over time, I'm going to make it a static variable, and I'm going to then flip the statement using the not symbol. So the exclamation mark is going to give us the reverse. So I can say not cloudy. And so if cloudy is initially no, and we come down to here and we say not cloudy, that's saying not no, which gives us yes. And so now cloudy is equal to yes. We come back up. This initial initialization with a static variable only happens once. And so that's why we generally don't want to use these types of variables because we'll be learning something else in one of the later videos. And so this is just good for quick tests and it's not something that you generally would release. 
I'm going to hit stop and we're going to run it again. And I'm going to check the weather. And now it's flipping between the two. So this is just sort of showing us what it would be like if we check the weather now and then we check the weather tomorrow and then the next day. All right, so the last one that we want to try is the grade checking. So here we want to say int grade is equal to 90. So let's say I got a 90 and I want to know, well, what's my letter grade? And here we're going to use those, we're going to use additional operations to sort of combine uh, the criteria for the different letter grades. And we're going to do A, B, C as the grades that we're going to support initially. And so I'll say while the grade is greater than or equal to 70 and, so that's a double ampersand, the grade is less than 80. So it's not less than or equal to 80, it is less than 80. So that should be a 79 or equivalent. And then if that's true, we're going to say self.gradeLabel.text is equal to at symbol quotation mark C. We'll repeat this with an else if. And if that is going to be the grade is greater than or equal to 80. And so you can sort of see a pattern here. Grade is less than 90. This is going to be a B. And then our last case is going to be an A. So greater than or equal to 90 and grade is Well, in this case, anything above 100 is going to be an A. So I'm actually not going to have that case and just say this. self.gradeLabel.text is equal to A. Now what I can do is hit the run button. And if we're following along, we click on check grade and it prints out A. And so this isn't going to cycle because we didn't tell it to. So what I'm going to do in code is just try some different values. So if we put in 50 and we run it again, we check our grade and we don't get any output. So that grade is not supported. So let's go with a value that is like 73. We run it and we check our grade and it's a C. Now we could also try uh, 80. So that's uh, on in between these two conditions, but since this one is greater than or equal to 80, it should be a B and we'll verify that. And we see it is a B. So this is how we can work with the if else statements. We can create booleans like we did up here. And we can also use sort of compound statements where we can have multiple conditions before we, we do something. And so this is a, a really useful concept in programming because it allows us to make our applications and our, our programs we create smarter and able to respond to different situations. All right, so that's it for this topic. I want you to play around with some of these values, try changing maybe the grading criteria. Maybe you've got a challenging professor who only gives you uh, an A if you have a 95 or higher or something like that.